It's Friday, March 29th, 2024. An absolutely stunning day here in Palm Desert, California. Blue skies, green grass, hummingbirds, roadrunners, Nugget was just out, Mimi was just out. An absolutely beautiful day to be alive. I hope all of you uh, are doing well today. I feel blessed to be alive. I hope you feel blessed to be alive. You know, things could be so much worse. Uh, we shouldn't take what we have every day we have. We shouldn't take it for granted. We should enjoy what we have. And so many people take, take for granted what they have. It's just not enough. And I'm telling you today, thank God for everything you have. You're walking, you're talking, if you're healthy, if you have a roof over your head, uh, if you have a job today, if you're paying the bills, God bless you. Uh, if you're alive today, you are blessed. Most of you are doing better than 90 some odd percent of the rest of the world. I can guarantee you that. But uh, please make sure to like, share, subscribe. I want to get right into this video today. This first article coming from the New York Post. American YouTube star, your fellow Arab, kidnapped in Haiti while trying to meet gang leader. Uh, Addison Pierre Malouf traveled from Atlanta to Haiti. He was kidnapped by the 400 uh, Ma Mawozi gang on March 14th. Uh, they are asking $600,000 U.S. to give him back. So pretty good size ransom. And I bring this up because something very interesting happened to me yesterday. I got a call from a detective from a police department here in California. I'm not going to say the department. It is up way up north, far away from here. And it was very, very interesting. He asked me if I knew a certain individual. And at first, I didn't. And he refreshed my memory, and I said, yes, I do remember this individual. Uh, this individual, a few years back, made a, made a video about me saying that he was going to take my life and how he was going to do it, saying that I was uh, in the Chicago outfit, the mafia, and that I had hurt his family. And he was out for revenge, yada, 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 bunch of just a bunch of BS. And anyways... Uh, I, I'd taken this video, I sent it over to a friend of mine in the sheriff's department uh, who at the time uh, was a captain. And he looked at it, viewed it, and just said, you know, we get a lot of these. I wouldn't take it too serious. Uh, but I did make a police report uh, of, the, uh, of the video. And so I just wanted something on paper. Now, I did find out... Uh, pretty quickly after I made that police report that he had had issues on the East Coast. He had made some threats. He had had some run-ins with law enforcement. And this detective yesterday was asking me if I still had the video, which I did not. Uh, what unfolded? Did I ever meet this individual? Uh, did I know him? Uh, which I did not. I only, you know, know the video. And they uh, obviously... We're investigating this individual. I don't know if he had been arrested, if he had committed some kind of crime, if he had assaulted somebody, took somebody's life. I have no idea. But they were calling me yesterday asking me for information. And I bring this up because, you know, a lot of people ask me why I don't show more of my personal life and my family and all that. And this is one of the reasons. Because there are lunatics out there. There are crazy people out there. And there are people who will do you harm. I mean, I don't have to tell anybody out there how bad crime is. I do videos on it quite often talking about the social collapse that we're seeing right now in America. And we'll talk more about that in just a few. But they would not tell me much. So I don't know what's going on with this individual. But I want to assure everybody out there, when this event took place a few years ago, it did not change my life one bit. I'm always training. I was training then. I'm training now. I carried then. I carry now. So nothing really changed. And it's a reminder to everybody out there that, you know, if you prepare for tough times, you're always prepared. And my life never changed, even with a threat on my life. People making a video of taking my life, very sick. But, you know, if it um, had gone any further... Uh, I would be prepared to deal with it. Don't want to have to do that, but I would be prepared. Did not miss a, a wink of sleep. Did not change my life. You know, some people think that, you know, I'm paranoid all day and that I'm a nervous wreck. I sleep eight to 10 hours a day. Got an hour of boxing in today. Uh, plan to sleep good tonight. Uh, eating good and just uh, trying to enjoy life the best that I can. 
when I make these videos, it's 20 minutes of time that I want to be very serious with all of you. And I don't joke around. Um, I am a private person. And again, this is another reason why, because of people like this. There are, you know, very ill-intended people. There are lunatics. There are crazy people. There are people who, you know, just want to look for trouble. And so I can deal with that, but I don't want to uh, allow my family to have to deal with these type of situations. I don't want to, you know, um, put them uh, in social media and then they're a target. I'm a target. That's fine. Uh, people in my family, I don't want them to be a target. But again, uh, we're all prepared and I just wanted to uh, just let everybody know that you know, you don't even have to be on social media. There could be, you know, any type of event unfolding. We'll talk more about that later. But, you know, uh, you have to be ready. There is no magic pill. There is no magic workout. You have to have the tools. You have to be proficient. Again, an hour of boxing today, doing some jujitsu, always trying to improve, always trying to st uh, stay sharp, ladies and gentlemen. And I think that's really the key is we all have to stay sharp uh, on our games, whether it's spiritual, whether it's financial, mental, physical, we have to stay sharp. So I wanted to share that with all of you. I never shared it years ago when it happened. I just really ignored it. But yesterday, that was a, uh, a phone call I was not expecting. And obviously, this individual uh, has caused more chaos. And maybe this individual needs help. I don't know. They may be in jail right now. They, hopefully, they did not hurt somebody. But always be ready. Shifting gears. Another New York City woman punched on, uh, on the street in attack that left her with a broken jaw. I was watching this video. They have a video of it. Tuesday, 5 p.m., serial, a uh, serial attacker struck Dolce uh, Pichardo on a sidewalk off Grand Avenue. And it's a, it's a shocking video, all of these are, to just uh, for a man to turn around and sucker punch a woman uh, for no reason whatsoever is absolutely alarming. It's disgusting. Uh, her jaw, uh, they interviewed her, her jaw's wired shut, all black and blue, puffy. Uh, she's lucky she has her teeth. But I mean, what is going on in America where women are now being targeted and sucker punched and having their jaws broken and being knocked to the ground, people being pushed in front of trains on the subway? What in the world is going on? Restaurant owner fears California minimum wage law is a silent tax on consumers, collapsing businesses. Get ready here in California for $26 hamburgers. If you want to go to a decent restaurant, you're going to be paying $25, $26 for a burger. Restaurant owner Angela Martin was interviewed on Fox Business. Her friend, it says, owns four McDonald's restaurants. And they're going to be closing these restaurants due to increased employment cost. Going to be closing four McDonald's restaurants that her friend owns. She said this is a silent tax on the public. The public will pay for unemployment of the people that are let go. The lower and middle class, she says, have been completely shut out. They can't even afford to go to McDonald's, let alone my place. And businesses are collapsing. Unbelievable. Yeah, this is, um, think about this. Her friend is closing four McDonald's. I don't know if it's all four or if it's four of six, seven, I don't know, doesn't quite say. But she's closing, I mean, closing four of your McDonald's, that's, a, that's, a, that's big. So it's wonderful that they're gonna pay people $20 to drop French fries uh, into, into the grease and, and flip burgers. But think about what this is gonna cost everybody here in the state of California. If it's happening here, trust me, it's gonna be heading your way. And these restaurant owners that, that don't own 60 restaurants, yeah, minimum wage here in California, I think it's around 15.50, but they have to contend, they have to compete with these franchises that are paying $20. So in order to get good help, these other restaurants have to match it or more. And it's going to bury them. It's, it's burying businesses right now. This is unbelievable. And 
thinking about just if you want to go get a good burger at a good restaurant, it's going to cost you over $25. People just aren't, aren't going to do it. There's a breaking point. Some can do it, not flinch. But at some point, people just go, I just can't justify this. Or if I'm going out to eat two or three times a week, maybe I'm going to do it once a week. Somebody's going to pay the price here, and it's going to be the restaurant owners. Outrage as murder charge against one of two 14-year-olds who beat elderly man 73 to death with orange traffic cone is dropped. James Lambert Jr., I remember this a couple years ago, 73 years old. Uh, was beaten with a traffic cone. Seventeens beat this beat this dude with a cone, and while they were doing it, they were laughing. They were filming it on their phones. They they just thought it was so entertaining, so much fun. This old man lost his life, and this happened by the way at 3 a.m. in the morning. Where in the world are these kids' parents? And how in the world is somebody let out? Uh. uh of jail. No charge now. Dropped. Nobody's going to, like, this kid's not going to do any time for this. Let me tell you, when, when you're 14 years old, you have a pretty good idea of, of right and wrong. And when I was 14 years old, I, I, I can't even imagine the thought of beating another human being with an object and laughing and filming it. I mean, these are demented psychopaths. This is pure evil. And as I've said a million times, what happens when the money runs out? What happens when the cost of food goes so high that people can't afford it? The EBT, the SNAP, the government subsidies can't afford it. Um, what are people going to do? How will they lash out then if they're doing this now just for entertainment? Another article today. Uh, this coming from Fox Business. Shark Tank star Barbara Cochran reveals when housing prices will go through the roof. This lady is out of her damn mind. And of course, she's heavily invested in real estate, so she's got to pump it up. And she's doing everything she can to pump it up. She wants the FOMO flowing. She wants you to go buy a house today. Um, she, she sure isn't paying attention. I'll tell you, tell you, she's not paying attention to the cost of insurance. She's not paying attention uh, to what the Fed and the Fed members are saying right now because uh, they're saying right now that we may not even get a cut this year. In fact, they're even talking about maybe raising rates next year. But remember, it was 6-7, now it's 2-3, and now it's maybe 50-50 in June. If it doesn't happen in June, we're, we're running out of time. I don't see it happening. I say maximum one cut if it happens, and, and I think that, that if they did that, it would look absolutely ridiculous. They're better not to cut it off than to even do one. But Barbara says this, if rates go down just another percentage point, that's what I'm hoping for. Prices are going to go through the roof. Could you imagine? We're almost at around 7% right now. Maybe I haven't checked today, maybe six and a half, six and, a, six and three quarters. Um, so Barbara's telling us if it goes down one more percentage point, this thing is going to go ballistic. The housing market's going to go ballistic over one percentage point. Everyone, she says, will come out and buy. Everyone's going to come out and buy. Barbara, everyone's losing their jobs. Barbara, have you seen the cost of, of, of home insurance right now? Have you seen the cost of food prices at the grocery store? You probably don't go to the grocery store yourself. Have you seen the price of gas lately? Have you seen all these layoffs, Barbara? When you don't have a job, when 78% of the country is living paycheck to paycheck and you think everyone's going to go buy a house? Real estate is going to go up another 8 to 10%, she says, if they cut rates. I think Barbara is dreaming. I, I think Barbara is in La La Land. She's hoping for the best, and I don't see it happening. Look, uh, she's a very intelligent woman, but she's also somebody heavily invested in real estate. She needs to see the real estate market go up. That's her bread and butter. That's where she makes money. She needs you to buy in. I don't see it happening. And I would say this. If you did see rates, if you saw a 30-year go down to 5.5, 5.75, let's say 5.5 to 6, I don't see it really doing much at this point. There's too much destruction in the economy. People's credit ratings are getting absolutely destroyed. The debt-to-income ratios are completely out of line. I don't see it happening. 
And she just thinks that, uh, you, you know, prices are just going to, I mean, these overinflated prices, she wants to see go even higher. Barbara, I want to see rates, I want to see mortgage rates go higher, and I want to see home prices come down, and I want to see people get jobs. And I want to see, I want to see inflation come down. I want to see taxes come down. That's what we need to see. Barbara didn't read this article right here. The home insurance market's crumbling. These owners are paying the price. Uh, Barbara Corcoran should read this. It's on CNN. Alfredo Herrera, this is just one of the individuals. If you get a moment, check this article out. Alfredo Herrera, he bought a 900 square foot home in 2020 in New Orleans for $270,000. Seems like a lot of money. In 2020, he paid $1,600 in homeowner's insurance. But last July, his insurer dropped him because they were leaving the state of Louisiana. He shopped around. He got a quote. Somebody quoted him $7,000. He used to pay $1,600. He had to settle for a policy for $4,930. That is a 208% increase. And there's other examples in this article of people going through the same thing. Barbara, how in the world are people going to buy homes when their home insurance is going up 200, 300%. I mean, one quote, 7,000. I mean, that's, that's over 300%. So I don't know um, what these people are smoking, um, but don't make this mistake, ladies and gentlemen. Be very, very careful um, of, of the people you're listening to, the advice, people still are selling that FOMO, uh, especially in real estate. You know, mortgage brokers, real estate agents, I mean, they want you to buy a house. There's never a bad time to buy a house. I would say, personally speaking, this is the worst time to buy a house in US history. And of course, somebody asked me the other day, well, prices have come down from the all-time high. Why am I not buying? And of course, because this is the worst possible time to buy a house, if you think, uh, coming down 7.7% from the all-time high from a couple years ago is going to make me get off this chair and go buy a house. You're sadly mistaken. Uh, when I see houses going up, you know, from uh, 2021 to 2024, over 100% in price, 150%, they're going to have to come down a lot more. So, you know, I'm going to let the, the sellers just sit as long as they want to sit. I can sit just as long. I can sit a lot longer. I, I, I'm not going anywhere. If I have to stay here, it's fine. We have we have a bug out in Texas. Uh, if we have to go to Texas, we have to get on a jet and fly to Texas. We'll be at uh, we'll be at Aaron's house. But uh, right now, uh, as long as everything remains calm, and look, that could change tomorrow. If it did, we're getting on a plane. We're bouncing. But in the meantime, sellers can sit as long as they want. But at some point, there's sellers out there that are going to have to raise capital. And they're going to have to get realistic with prices. And that day is coming. We're going to see major economic crashes in America. The economy has already cra crashed. Commercial real estate has crashed. They're just not telling you yet. That's going to have huge implications on the regionals, the big banks, the small banks. It's going to have a huge impact on the U.S. economy. Uh, the credit crisis is not going away. The inflation crisis is not going away. The housing crisis. Look, we're in a housing crisis right now. You can ask a million dollars for your house, great, but you've been on the market for 200, 300, 400, 1,000 days, and you're going to be on the market because there's not enough qualified buyers now that are able to purchase these homes with more new homes hitting the market that are more competitive, pet, competitively priced with um, uh, mortgage uh, buy downs and all the incentives that they're throwing in. And the new home builders have really dropped prices, but they don't even include the incentives and the mortgage buy downs in those prices. So those, uh, those prices have really, really come down and they're gonna to have to come down even more because the market's gonna get a lot more competitive between new homes and existing homes. When people don't have jobs, when they don't have enough income and their wages are getting destroyed by inflation, they have no money saved up, you don't have to be a rocket scientists, ladies and gentlemen, to, to see how all this is going to play out. Yes, there are people that can afford to buy a home right now. The majority of this country cannot. And the majority of this country, uh, a poll I was watching on Fox Business about two days ago, maybe I think it was Fox Business, maybe it was another channel. Um, most people in this country say this is the worst, I think it was 87%, 85% say that this is not a good time to buy a house. It was 80 some odd percent, 84, 85. 
this is not a good time to buy a house. And I totally agree. In fact, I think it's the worst time to buy a house. So be careful out there. It's not financial advice. You want to buy a house today. God bless you. I wish you the best of luck. But wait till people begin to see the equity just being sucked right out of their homes. And they're going to they're gonna find out that being rich on paper is a lot different than really being rich. So I'm going to leave it there today. I don't want to rant. Beautiful day. we got a little breeze coming in. Believe it or not, we're talking about big rain coming in uh, this weekend. So we'll see how it plays out. But in the meantime, I'm going to enjoy today. Uh, be safe out there. Uh, be careful. Exercise situational awareness. Uh, keep up with the physical fitness. Keep up with the financial fitness, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, make sure... Uh, that you're able to protect yourselves mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. If I can give you any advice at all, it's that. Take that advice this weekend and and really um, put that towards your lives. And I think that you'll be a much better, stronger, prepared person if you do. This is not a one-dimensional type uh, of preparation now. You have to be multi-dimensional. A lot of things happening. You know, too many people just focus on the economic side of it. But they're ignoring what's happening to society and this collapse of society. They're, they're, they're ignoring um, their, their physical fitness and, and being able to protect themselves and having security and being proficient. These are things, ladies and gentlemen, that you have to be um, dealing with now, training and, and preparing with daily now. This is a way of life. These are things you need to be implementing in your life daily. It's like taking a vitamin. Did you train? Did you hit? Did you box? Did you do your jujitsu? Uh, did you get to the gym? Uh, did you buy extra food, extra water? Did you buy some uh, gold? Did you buy some silver? There's so many things, so many moving parts now. We, this is a way of life. And if you're not doing this, you're not prepared for what's going to happen. And when it happens, you know, people are just going to go into shock. They're not going to know what to do. Don't be one of those people. God bless. Be safe.